Philip, a construction worker, always starts his daily program with a good cup of coffee at the coffee shop before going to work. Philip lives in the United States and comes from a Jewish assimilated family. Moreover, at the time of the story recounted here, he knows nothing of Judaism. Not only does he not respect the Torah and the mitzvot, but he is married to a non-Jewish woman. One day, while visiting a building site in Brooklyn, he arrives by chance in a kosher restaurant. He orders a coffee and a bagel, which are served to him by a practicing Jewish old woman. After having quickly had breakfast, he asks for the bill. Searching through his wallet, he managed to collect the exact sum to pay for his breakfast, but he has nothing more left to leave a tip, as it is customary to do. He then takes out a lottery ticket, shows it to the waitress and tells her, if I win the lottery, you will receive half of my winnings. This will be your tip. The waitress nods to the chef and says, what is the probability of him winning? Chance in several million? Well, this is not the first time a consumer has stolen a tip. A few days later, shouts are heard at Philip's home. No, you are not serious saying that. Did you go crazy? Giving two and a half million dollars like that to a complete stranger? The screams could be heard at the other end of the street. They were those of Philip's non-Jewish wife. The clash took place 15 days after this morning bagel and coffee taken at the kosher restaurant. On that day, while listening to the results of the lottery draw, Philip notices that he is the first number. Same for the second number. From there, he asks his wife to join him to check as the other figures are shown. As he approaches the last number, he finds himself praying with all of his might when bingo! All the numbers of the tickets are winners. He had won the $5 million jackpot. Like any American in such a situation, he expresses his happiness by jumping in all directions. But he suddenly folds back on himself and becomes thoughtful. His wife immediately notices this abrupt change of attitude and asks, Hey, you just won the jackpot. What's happening to you? He had just recalled the words he had said at the little kosher restaurant. If I win the lottery, you will receive half of my winnings. This will be your tip. An hour passes, then two. Philip resolves to keep his commitment and to give two and a half million dollars to the old Jewish woman. It was at this moment that the shouts of his non-Jewish wife sounded. You will never do that. And if you ever do it, you will find me on your way. I'll tell everyone you're crazy. Philip sits, a little curled up on himself, says in a firm and clear voice, I am someone honest. I will not miss my word. The next morning, he finds himself in front of a beautiful breakfast party. His wife still thought she might dissuade him from his decision. But Philip repeats once again firmly, I have never betrayed my word all my life. It is not today that I will begin. At one point, he had inadvertently suggested that he might not give the full amount promised to this old lady. He then decides to go back to see the exact situation of this waitress. The same day, he goes to the coffee shop, ordering a coffee and a bagel. You know what? Finally, I won, Philip announces to the waitress. What'd you win? I won the lottery. The woman did not understand where he was going until Philip reminded her of his commitment two weeks ago. Leave me alone. I'm an old woman. Don't make fun of me. Finish your coffee and go away. Philip then gets up immediately and hurries out to buy the newspaper to prove to her that he did have the correct numbers. To her surprise, the elderly lady laughs, cries, at the same time then tells her story. My husband and I have been married for many years, but we only had one child. 
For a very long time, we hoped to have a son as well. And we were answered, but to our great despair, he is very sick. All the necessary care and numerous hospital stays did not allow us to work regularly. And this is without counting the cost of the drugs that overwhelm us. You are simply an angel from heaven to save us, she said, bursting into tears. At that moment, Philip knew exactly what to do. It was obvious that he would respect his word. He would give the promised sum to the waitress, two and a half million dollars. He would then share the remaining half with his non-Jewish wife, who wanted to divorce him, following this story. When he arrives at the old woman's home to pay her due, Philip is surprised to see all the family members busy with something more important. Indeed, they ask him to wait a few minutes to let them finish the lighting of the candles. Which candles? Why was it so important? They explained to him then the nature of the miracle of Hanukkah. Philip is impressed. To commemorate a miracle that happened thousands of years ago? These Jews are delaying the accomplishment of a miracle now unfolding before their eyes? Listen, he said to them. I am of Jewish origin myself. Very happy to hear this, they invite him in and immediately to join the candlelight. It was then that the flame of the candle revives the Jewish spark hidden in Philip's heart. Because at this very moment, he feels a change in the depths of his being. Tears rise to Philip's eyes when he sees the sick child approaching to light a candle. The little stutter, a few syllables with difficulty, but the light emanating from his face is magnificent. The whole family answers, Amen. As a result of this evening, Philip begins to get closer to Judaism. This beginning will eventually bring him to study for a whole year within a yeshiva for Bali Chuba. At this point in his journey, he is introduced to Eti, who is none other than the daughter of the elderly waitress. Today, they are proud to have created a Torah-friendly home and are blessed to have children raised in the mitzvot. Shabbat Shalom.